Hi everyone, this is a video welcoming you to class. This is Psych 201, uh, Section 4W. It's an online class. I'm your professor, Kevin Carlson. You can call me Kevin if you want. I have no problems if you want to use my first name. Uh, however, if you don't feel comfortable with that and you want to call me by some title, call me by the appropriate title, which would be either Professor Carlson or uh, Dr. Carlson. Um, or if you want a mixture of sort of informal and formal, you can call me Professor Kevin or Dr. Kevin. So those are five things you can call me. Um, the only thing I say is that um, if you're going to use a title, I don't care about titles, because again, you can just call me Kevin if you want to. But if you're going to call me a title, call me the appropriate one, either Dr. or Kevin, or Dr. or Professor. Uh, don't call me Mr. Um, so my title is Dr. or Professor. If you want to use it, if you don't, just call me Kevin. So this video will go over the course, and I'll talk a little bit about the first couple weeks of work for the course. So again, we are online. And therefore, you're going to be doing a lot of work on Blackboard. And since this is a more advanced course, I'm sure that you have experience here at CWI with Blackboard. So, you know, some of the things we don't need to go over that's in the syllabus, you can read them. Uh, here's my office hours. If you can't make it to my office hours, uh, send me an email. And we can try to set up a Zoom appointment, or um, perhaps I can answer your question via email also. So again, you can read through a lot of this stuff that's on here. I do want to highlight the important stuff, so probably one of the things that you're curious about is what are you going to be doing in class? And so uh, you're going to be doing a lot of writing, but uh, don't worry. Uh, the writing really is about you expressing your ideas. And so... I'm going to um, help you uh, write and express your ideas. And so uh, there's various things we're going, be, we're going to be doing. And what I'll say is, as I'm going through some of these things, and actually quite a few of these things, they are actually going to help you develop your signature assignment. And so some of these assignments that are listed here are actually things that will help you develop your signature assignment, which I'll talk about in a bit. And so um, related to that, again, I'll make videos about these assignments as we get to them. So this is just an overview. Uh, so one thing is that you're going to be doing a study review paper, which is basically you're going to find an article, a research article, that is about child and or adolescent development. That's what we're taking this class for. So you're going to be reading an article and writing a paper on that. And again, I will make a video that will explain this paper in more detail. You're going to be writing an attachment paper. So one of the topics that we're going to cover in class is attachment about your relationships during your lifetime and how it's affected your development. And so we'll have this paper as part of that topic. And again, we'll talk more about this as we get to that in this thing in the point of the semester. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about it right now because it wouldn't make any sense. So we'll talk about it when we get to it. Uh, there'll be exams. Uh, there's going to be four non-cumulative exams. And so these exams are actually going to be essay exams. And they are open book, open notes. And uh, it's not listed here in the syllabus, but they're also um, untimed. Uh, there'll be some span of time that you have to do the work, but that span is usually at least one week, if not longer. And so um, it's not like you have to sit down, let's say, for three hours and in a three-hour time span finish everything. So it's open book, open notes, and you'll have at least a week to complete the exam. And then we're going to have what we call concept papers. So essentially we have four units in the class. So uh, basically those are uh, basically structured around time span. 
Uh, so for example, like infancy is a time span in development. And so we'll be looking at four periods of development and each of those periods is going to be a unit in the class. And so for each of the units, you're going to write one of these concept papers. And again, we'll talk more about this when we get to it. Uh, but basically, this is also a step in writing your signature assignment. So just like the study review paper, it's not just an assignment you're just doing and you're just doing it by itself. It's actually something to help build your signature assignment. Same thing for the concept papers. So our signature assignment is a 10 page paper. And essentially, we have four concept papers and you can write two pages of that. If you take four times two, that's eight. If your concept papers are really well written, they are going to make up at least half of your signature assignment, if not more. And so again, uh, it might you might think, oh, there's quite a bit of stuff here, but this is all building into a signature assignment. What is a signature assignment? It is called a community research proposal. So what does that mean? Well, we have details down here. So community research proposal is basically you're going to identify a developmentally developmentally related need in the community. You're going to research that issue and possible solutions and then complete a research proposal to address that need. And because of this class is in psychology, uh, that proposal should be based on research that you read uh, in research articles and think about how concepts, theories, and research tells us about real-world solutions to help people. So let's sort of dissect this long sentence here. Developmentally related, what does that mean? Well, this is a class on child and adolescent development, so uh, you will have to look at impacts on that, impacts on child and or adolescent development. So uh, you can look at uh, various things. You could look at families, you could look at schools, you could look at communities. Um, so you're not necessarily just looking at um, children or adolescents, but you're looking at their larger context of development. And so it says also here a need in the community. And so there's sort of two ways you could take that. Uh, one could be um, something that's problematic. So there's a problem that's negatively affecting uh, child and adolescent development, and you want to look at the root causes of those problems and uh, community programs. So what can you do to help kids to reverse those negative effects of that issue? And so what I'll say is um, this is really broad. So when you talk about child and adolescent development, there's so many things you can look at. And then when you're looking at needs, there's so many things you can look at. So I want you to think about a topic that you're really interested in. So choose something that you're really going to be interested in because you're going to be working on this all semester. And I've had um, you know students who do that, who choose something that they're really interested in, uh, just do more than they need to. Um, so I've had students who do more. Um, I'm not doing it for this class, but I've done video presentations in the past, and I think I had a limit of something like 10 to 15 minutes for the presentation. I had somebody do like a 45 minute presentation and they just said, I'm sorry, I'm really passionate about this and I did extra work and I want to talk about it. And that was fine. Um, so if you choose something that you're interested in, you're really going to learn a lot. You're going to get a lot from this. If you just kind of choose something because oh, I just need to do this, uh, you're probably not going to be very happy this semester. So choose something that you're interested in. Um, on that note, people always ask me for examples. I'm sometimes reluctant, so I know that people kind of want examples, but I also am reluctant because I think if I give examples, I think, oh, everybody who's not really thinking about what they want to do will just choose that, and I'm a little bit afraid of that. Um, so a good example of um, a need in terms of something that is a problem, a very simple one would be um, adolescent substance abuse. 
So obviously adolescent substance abuse has negative impacts on adolescent development. So you could look at it in different ways. You could look at, so when we, when we talk about this, we sometimes talk about interventions. Um, so community-based interventions. So what can we do? So uh, one level is you could write about families and how um, interventions with families can help address this issue of substance abuse. Or it could be school, you know, maybe it could be a school-based program that addresses adolescent substance abuse. Or it could be a community-based program. So in the community, uh, resources and other programs that could be set up to help address this issue interested in, but it could be many different things. So what I'll say right now is choose a general issue and then your specific focus will come as you read more about it. So don't worry right now. Don't worry that, oh, I'm not sure what I want to focus in on. You don't, I don't expect you to, and it's not reasonable. Um, but what I would expect is some sort of general topic. Uh, and that general topic will be a way that you can start looking at things, and then you will focus more as you go along. And then uh, on the other side of things, so there's sort of like a problematic part. you know. So you could do a problem, or you could do something that is simply trying to um, optimize development. So it's not necessarily a problem, but given this context of child and or adolescent development, how can we do something with that context to make development optimal, improve development? So an example of this would be, uh, I've had students in the past do homeschooling. So I would not say that homeschooling is a problem, like, you know, substance abuse is a problem, but homeschooling is a context. And we can say, well, um, how can we uh, institute homeschooling? How can we have certain processes, uh, certain things in homeschooling that will optimally develop children and adolescents? Um, so the big key, obviously, in both of these types of things is how can we improve the development of children and adolescents. So that is the key to this paper, to this project. And again, I would strongly suggest choosing something that you're interested in. And if you're not sure, you can, uh, for example, skim our textbook um, or skim something, um, you know, try to find some ideas that, you know, won't take a lot of time, but if you skim around, maybe you'll find some things or do a Google search and maybe that will give you some ins inspiration. And then something you're going to be doing as part of your project. So you're going to be obviously uh, using stuff from class. So using our textbook, using our lectures, um, that's mainly what the concept papers are for sort of taking things from our textbook and lectures to help think about your topic. Uh, you're also gonna be reading some published research. And also another source for your paper is the um, interviewing somebody who does work in that area. So if I'm doing adolescent substance abuse, I identify somebody who works in that area in the community and interview them. Uh, these interviews will happen uh, towards the end of your paper. The reason for that is I want you to have quite a number of ideas about your proposal and then maybe bounce some of your ideas off to somebody who actually works in the field. And so um, this will be another source for your paper is interviewing somebody who's on the ground, if you will, working in this area that you're writing about. And again, we'll talk more about this uh, later in class. Uh, that, that will occur later in the semester, this interview. So it's a 10-page paper in APA style. We'll go over this APA style in class uh, in, in the, some videos that I'll have online. And when it says 10 pages, uh, that's 10 pages of uh, narrative. So you do not count, uh, actually you don't need, I have to think about this. Um, so you don't count the title page and you don't count references, the references page, pages. 
and, or any sort of tables or figures that you might have, so appendices, those types of things. Um, so those don't count for pages, so it's 10 pages of narrative. And again, if you think about the concept paper uh, that you're going to be writing four times in the semester, you're going to get more than half of your paper written through those things. And so um, this is the structure of the paper. I don't want to talk a lot about this right now. You can you can read through this, but I don't want to overwhelm you at the moment. Right now, I just want you to get thinking about your topic. Uh, because these things, the answers to these questions, will flow from your work during the semester. So you can't answer them now, but um, there are guidelines here. So that's what I'll do is I'll just point that there's guidelines. Here's the grading policy, probably similar to other ones. Please check your grades on Blackboard. I've had some uh, people ch check late and uh, try to change things. So just double check your grades on Blackboard. Make sure that they're accurate. Uh, Blackboard is not the best. And so, um, you know, for example, I find sometimes uh, if uh, somebody turns in something late, and even though I grade it in the thing I normally grade it in and put points there, and I give feedback there, and I submit it just like everybody else's, but when it's late, sometimes the points don't show up in the gradebook. And don't ask me why. Uh, it's a horrible thing that happens in Blackboard. Uh, so just double check. Uh, Blackboard makes mistakes. And so let's make sure that Blackboard doesn't take away points from you. Here's our textbook. So an important thing about the textbook is this is just for reading. So you do not have to buy the ebook. You do not have to buy any sort of online access. So there's nothing that we're going to be using that's online. All your assignments uh, and exams, things like that, are going to be on Blackboard. So you don't need any sort of electronic access. The book is just for reading. So uh, whether you choose the ebook or whether you choose a used paper copy that you get from somewhere online, that would be fine with me. If you want to get a used textbook that's cheaper online, that's fine with me. Just make sure that you have that edition, the 8th edition. So again, uh, choose what you want, the format that you want, but know that you can choose cheaper alternatives. And again, you don't need any online access. You just need to read. So many of these things you can read here. Um, Blackboard's very important, so I sort of highlight that. So I make announcements online, especially for a class like this, which is purely online, where we don't meet live. And so make sure you check Blackboard announcements. I typically will also email those announcements. So uh, oftentimes when I get questions, there are actually some things that have been addressed in announcements. So make sure to look at those announcements. You can read through these things. And uh, one thing I guess I should note is, in terms of college resources, is if you are having problems uh, with a computer, not having a computer, or maybe your computer is really old and you're finding it's not really working well, the library has loaner computers. And so you can loan the computer. It's supposed to be for the semester. You can ask the librarians in more detail about that. Uh, and we were told recently that there's um, there should be plenty of computers for students that need it. Uh, what I'll say is if you don't need a computer, probably go ahead and use, you know, if you have your own and it works well, that's probably good just to use yours. Uh, that will save computers for people that really, really need them. But if you need a computer, uh, your computer is not good enough or you don't have one, uh, contact a library to get a loaner computer. So here's our class schedule. And so uh, I'm not going to go over all of it, but let's just talk about the first two weeks. So the first two weeks, 
the broad topic of the study of human development. You'll find that that chapter is relatively long. And then the video lectures are in three parts for that. So it's a pretty long topic, so we're going to do it over the first two weeks. And then what I'm going to ask you is, by Monday, January 24th, so that's 12 days from now, is um, email me your proposed topic for your community research proposal. So again, I don't expect anything super specific. So I don't expect anything like, oh, I want to do adolescent substance abuse, and I'm going to do a program in grade uh, 6 through 7, and the program's going to be like this. No, no, you don't need that. You can just simply say, I want to do adolescent substance abuse, and that would be fine. So email me your general topic. And so I just want you to get thinking about that during this first week uh, so that you have a, a direction that you can take for further work in following weeks. And so uh, I'm just going to concentrate on that. So week number one and two is that topic. And the only thing that you need to do in those two weeks is to email me the topic, although you will obviously start working on some other things that we'll talk about uh, next week, I think. And so here's the schedule. Do notice that unit number one is quite long. So unit number one is actually seven weeks because there's a lot of sort of general things that we cover and also we're covering uh, prenatal development and infancy. So uh, there's three weeks of sort of general stuff that is true for all development and then we do prenatal and infancy and that covers uh, three weeks or four weeks, I'm sorry, for that development. So uh, that's four plus three. So it's a little bit long. But what I'll say is, again, we have an open book, open notes, untimed exam. And so uh, you will be able to sort of focus in on those exam questions rather than trying to memorize uh, so many small little details about things. And so, again, we will talk more about the schedule as we go along. Uh, so if you want to look at it and sort of plan out, you'll see almost every week we have something. Uh, and the intent for that is to have the flow of work be sort of smaller and constant rather than um, intermittent and rushed. You know, so it's not like every once in three weeks you have to do something, but then you have to cram and do so much work when it's due. Uh, here we've tried to have a steady pace throughout the course, and that way um, it will be less stressful, and I think you'll learn more. And... The last thing I want to show you is the Blackboard shell. And so here's the Blackboard shell. And normally there'll be announcements. And actually, after I send this, it will show up as an announcement. So you want to be able to see that. You'll see that there's several things here. So there's the faculty information, which has the office hours on it. It's also in the syllabus. So here's the syllabus. You can download the syllabus. And then our material in class will be in a weekly modules tab. We're going to have only a couple tabs. We're going to have weekly modules. And then once we start having things related to the signature assignment, there'll be a signature assignment tab. Um, so we're not going to have a lot of um, tabs, just a couple of them. And all assignments will be in weekly modules, and I'll announce them too. So our weekly modules for week so weekly modules for weeks number one and two is pretty simple. Um, remember, I said that chapter one is relatively long. It's covering uh, quite a few broad topics. So the video lecture is in three parts. So these are videos. And then um, make sure you watch these videos within the first two weeks. And then uh, there's a PowerPoint of the lecture. So that PowerPoint will help you take notes and learn, etc. So you can download the PowerPoint right there. So that's it. Um, so hopefully I hope that you enjoy the class. And just as a final reminder, uh, please email me your general topic 
for your signature assignment, the community research proposal, by Monday, January 24th. And so uh, that's it. If you have any questions, you can email me. Otherwise, I will make announcements every week about class and keep in touch with you in that way. Uh, so enjoy the class. Enjoy the last couple days of your break and take care.